Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Ali Azzeddin for Generation for Education, and it's our special day about 21st century skills or the ATL. Uh, feel free to introduce who you are and from where you are watching uh, in that chat, and make sure you are choosing to everyone, Cynthia, uh, so everyone can read your answers and reflection. Remember, if you have any questions, you can uh, send them in the Q&A. We are also live on Facebook for all the people who are watching uh, on Facebook also feel free to interact with us um, the day was so inspiring since the morning and I can see that many people they've been watching since the morning so Nermeen how are you I'm fine Ali and you Good, good. So the day started in Honduras with Kevin. We yeah. moved to uh, Qatar with Tala. Then we had uh, uh, Leila in Dubai. Um, after uh, the lunch break, we had uh, Rachel from UK, and now we are back to Jordan. So what do you think about this virtual travel? <laughs> I was actually attending all of your sessions this morning, and I felt as um, I'm going to give this workshop, I was able to make connections. So I think the participants will be able to make these connections too as we you know introduce the skill and map it and first of all I would like to thank everyone uh, for those who are attending and um, thank them for you know continuing to push on professional development even uh, you know uh, during weekends and personally I would like to thank you Ali uh, for this opportunity and for taking the initiative, you know, to connect all people from all around the world to share their practices and experiences. To me, you have been uh, a mentor since, you know, the beginning of my journey in the PYP. So I would really like to thank you for that, Ali. Thank you so much. Thank you, Irmeen. So people are watching from Bangladesh, Uzbekistan, Saudi Arabia, Jordan for sure, Qatar, UAE, uh, and many other places. Uh, they are getting to know each other in the chat. Uh, so continue all this interaction. The session is very interactive. Uh, interact with us via Facebook and here on Zoom. Uh, let's give it a start and know a little bit about Nermeen. So who is Nermeen and what is she doing currently? Let's Let's move to the following slide. Yes, uh, so uh, I was born in Amman and uh, raised in Amman and I work in Amman, Jordan. I'm currently the PYP coordinator in an IB school in uh, Jordan. So I've been in education for 12 years, leading and facilitating in school sessions for parents and teachers. I am um, uh, formerly a homeroom teacher that taught different grade levels from one to five and the subject coordinator. I am also a mother of three beautiful children. So you get to, you know, see the, um, you know, the, the too many hats I wear and the too many roles I take during the day. And I am deeply, to be honest, inspired by everyone I work with. And I find the levels of compassion and reflection and collaboration to be very impressive. And within the context of the ATL skills too, I also feel that critical thinking and um, evaluating, me making meaningful connections are key components of an engaging learning community. And this is my email address, uh, if you can see it, and if you would like to contact me at any time. Good, Nermeen. So now that we've done all this intro, we're ready yeah. to guess what are the questions and what did you prepare for us? I know we had a previous session on uh, ATL in practice, but because I know also the content of uh, the two sessions, I know that you are going to push the thinking of the teacher and take them further. So what yeah. about uh, the continuum of the ATL? Con so what did you prepare here? A kind of a self-peer assessment, so. Yes, uh, I would love to see the audience and the, the participants, and I would like them to rate their understanding, current understanding of the ATL skills uh, on a continuum uh, from one to five, five being the highest and low being the uh, uh, one being the lowest. Where do they see themselves? So. So I launched the poll, Nermeen, yeah. and so uh, rate your understanding of the ATLs. One is the lowest and five is the highest. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of interaction here. The people who are watching on Facebook, let me say hello to Iman, to Manar, to uh, Hidayah, uh, and uh, feel free to put your answer on the Facebook uh, chat. Uh, the people who are live on Zoom, they are answering here live uh, on Zoom, and I'm using the 
um, whole feature to make it uh, interactive. And I'm giving a few more seconds, Nermeen, so uh, no. we can get a big picture uh, of our attendees and where they are uh, according to their understanding of the ATL. And uh, let's well, give this it is a... very interesting, actually, because this could guide us into you know deeper discussions as we uh, move with the workshop. The Very good. So I could yes. see uh, threes and fours, um, bits of fives and... Let me give you the data. So 1%, yeah. 2% they are new maybe to the ATL. Let me remind them that when we say ATL, we're talking about the 21st century skills. 6% yeah. uh, they are on number two. 50% they are on number three. So maybe they decided to choose the secure space. <laughs> and then 38% they feel that they have a good knowledge of the ATL. And then 4% they have a deep understanding and they are on number five. So we will count on them to share some idea in the chat and to share some resources as well in the chat. So this is a little bit the background of our audience and their understanding of the ATL. That's very interesting, Ali. Okay, shall we move forward or? Yes, so yeah. I think it's the time for the questions. <laughs> Question time. Let's okay. check. All right. You're stuck. I am stuck. Okay, so you need okay, to, no. uh, the questions are here. So what okay. are our questions today? So, the questions are, first of all, we're going to look at the purpose of the ATL skills and then uh, how can we unpack the ATL skills. Many strategies were used uh, today uh, in the sessions uh, that were already facilitated. Um, how do we explicitly and implicitly teach the ATL skills and how do we plan as a tool to create a continuum and why is it useful? Because it's very important to start with the why and the purpose. Why is it important to create this ATL continuum at school? First of all, uh, looking back at data, let's see what the world says about the approaches to learning skills, or as you said, the 21st century skills. Now, um, as the world changes and the economies, uh, um, along with, uh, with it, the need for a skill-based workforce is on the rise. If you see, uh, if you look at the figure on the right, uh, new uh, jobs will emerge and uh, others will be displaced. Uh, look at the numbers, 97 million will have growing job demands on, for example, digital transform trans uh, transformation. They will also have software and application developers, the internet of things as they called it, while the 85 million decreasing jobs will go to assembly and factory workers, for example, accounting and such. So I think these numbers are trying to say something. Uh, if we look at uh, the figure on the left, for example, greater adoption of technology will mean in-demand skills across jobs change over the next five years. Um, critical thinking and problem solving top the uh, uh, list of skills that employers believe will grow in prominence in the next five years. And what is interesting, Ali, as we are now, you know, dealing with the pandemic is that there are newly emerging skills such as self-management, active learning, resilience, stress tolerance and flexibility. And that makes us think as educators and as leaders, um, where are we going so that we could set expectations accordingly. So what does research say about the ATL skills? So the changing social demands, of course, they require knowledge and skills that can be applied uh, across all disciplines and uh, professionals who can analyze and have effective communication, they will be able to meet the, you know, uh, all the changes that are happening in the world. And also it's very important not to underestimate how we are placing this ownership in the hands of students and how assessments are also um, not only, uh, they're not only about grades, but they're showing competencies. Uh, research also, uh, also showed a correlation between social um, or the, the enhancement of social, emotional skills and effective teaching. And this is why we're adding more uh, well-being into our curriculum, advisory lessons. This is when we are taking um, actions as a school involving teachers and parents as well, uh, and um, how we 
know that their help is needed to promote this uh, social and emotional uh, abilities. What does the IB say now? According to standards and practices, uh, we know that the IB uh, celebrates the many ways people uh, construct uh, meaning and make sense of the world. So through the interplay of critical thinking and the constructivist approach, we do understand that this is, you know, it opens to, it, it's opening towards the democratic classrooms. We know that uh, people also, uh, IB students and teachers are lifelong learners, not only independently, but with, the, with their relationships, you know, with everyone around them. Also, as they, you mentioned, they mentioned uh, earlier in one of the workshops, um, it's very important to have a set of skills so that students are internationally minded. So these were the three things that I would, would wanted to highlight as a purpose of the ATL skills. Let's just think of the world and the research and different programs. I actually like this uh, quote. It says uh, by Kathleen, personalized learning is not what is done to the learner or about tailoring the learning. It is about helping each uh, learner to identify and de develop the skills they need to support and enhance their own learning so that agency and self-advocacy can be realized. Now, we want to engage uh, the participants here, Ali, with a very, very quick question. Um, that will give us, you know, enough insight uh, how to move forward with the webinar. What are some challenges you face when implementing the ATL skills? Because to be to be honest, there are some challenges uh, that we face as educators, and would love to see their answers. I already have my laptop open, so I could just also read the comments as you do, uh, as you are, Ali. Good. So challenges when you implement ATL. What are your challenges? It's a moment to interact with us. And uh, I know that Nermin prepared for us a lot of resources that they will be shared um, on a Padlet and on other uh, documents. So uh, wait for what's coming next in this webinar and let us know what are the challenges that you are facing. So Hiba, hi Hiba. Hiba from Lebanon is saying that how to teach explicitly the ATL. Uh, Rebecca, uh, she's telling about the language and how we can make it uh, accessible. Uh, Henna is asking about how we make it and we teach it in the single subject. So Henna, if you are an uh, Arabic speaker, join us for the last session. After Nermeen, we will be looking at ATL in visual art. The session will be in Arabic. Uh, Dana is checking how do we model it for the early years. And then Maisa is checking uh, or talking about that challenge of how ATL and teaching ATL will change from a grade level to a different level. So what are these different levels? I can see some people are talking about the challenge of assessment, uh, creating the learning toolkit, uh, the skills require more time to be taught, and so on and so on. So you have a bank of challenges, Nermeen. I hope yes. you have some solutions. <laughs> so I think we should go back to this question uh, as we finish and you know finish and reflect on this session, but it's very interesting that some questions um, they will see some answers in the slide. Yeah, presentation. Uh, yes. Paula and everyone else, remember uh, in that chat, if you put two and then with the drop down menu, you choose everyone, not on the host and panelist. And then the Q&A for your question to Nermeen. So this will be very helpful. So uh, I created this um, uh, Google Docs sheet that Ali uh, will share. And yes. um, so I'm going to open it. It's a way to unpack the ATL skills in the PYP. By the way, this is inspired by many educators who assembled um, or did uh, so many uh, toolkits for the MYP. Uh, and um, this is for PYP and it's translated. I believe it's, um, it's, it's, it's a good toolkit to better help you know teachers understand the ATL skills so you will see that there are different categories and uh, the, there's an explanation part because we noticed that sometimes um, we do not understand the ATL itself and we cannot make that connection so it's better to start with what is it and then you know a transfer it to the context um, also, uh, there's a tool here that is on the right, as, uh, on the right, uh, you get to add uh, visible thinking routines, making connections to what just um, what uh, Rachel said 
course, she also introduced or she uh, mentioned a lot of strategies that you can use to explicitly teach certain skills. So I think this is a good way to start here. Use uh, tools to use when implementing, whether it was a visible thinking routine, whether it was um, um, self-assessment, peer assessment, whatever. I suggest that uh, teachers, they share or they work on this toolkit collaboratively because they know what works best for the school and they can add to it and they can make connection to the context of, for example, the learning outcomes they have from the scope and sequence documents. Let me say that for our French teacher and even our English speakers, there is a monthly meeting where we work and we develop and we interact uh, to develop resources for ATL. So check our website and check lalatat.com uh, to know more about this meeting. Yes. Okay. Um, also, there's an explicit and implicit teaching. I created this page. I am a visual person, Ali, and I like to see things. Um, on screen and um, I like to see colors and such. So this is another thing that um, uh, you can use um, at school, depending on the context. Um, again, uh, this thing link page, it um, contains examples for explicit and implicit teaching of the skills. You can create one and ask your teams, uh, Ali, if you could just share the link for them, they could explore the different ways we can explicitly teach. Um, uh, sorry, Nermeen, uh, the link that I got, it's a photo, so I cannot copy it and paste it. Maybe if you can copy and paste it in the chat. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I will be able also to share it on Facebook for the people who are watching on Facebook. Yes, thank you, Nermeen. You're most welcome. So uh, looking at the explicit teaching, we know that uh, explicit, it means the direct uh, teaching of the skill, whether it was within the content of the subject or outside. Uh, also, the uh, implicit uh, teaching is when uh, the ATL is embedded uh, and you can use it um, in other subjects too. For example, if we look at the first one um, here, as uh, students are inquiring into sharing the planet, and uh, they want to propose and evaluate solutions, there's this strategy that the teacher uh, modeled in class, which is called, for example, if we're looking at different problems, such as littering, traffic jam, there's one strategy that teachers could use, which is, uh, it's called the plus minus interesting. This is very good because it helps students um, propose solutions and then after they finish they could evaluate the solutions accordingly. So this is how we could explicitly use the skill and then students as they uh, copy the same skill you know following the cycle of the ATL skill then they can also do it independently in another context. This way I can make sure that students are able to propose and evaluate questions and um, as you mentioned earlier today, Ali, it's very important to take time to, you know, practice these visible thinking routines because um, you cannot just jump from one to another. You need to make sure that students actually comprehend what this is about. Connecting it again, this is very weird because you were saying that um, most um, facilitators today were connecting to math and I connected proposing, and, yes. <laughs> which is very weird, but this was connected to math because a group of a grade five students, you know, created a poll to suggest solutions related to the conflict and the use of weapons against civilians, for example. And this is very linked to the first uh, uh, ATL skill. Also, uh, building consensus is very important. There are certain samples of building consensus, for example, using uh, the WNES. Um, uh, this is also a good starter for this skill. Uh, I'm just sharing some examples. This could also uh, be used uh, by teachers. You could add to it. You could uh, use it as a starting point for students as well. And I also added the resources you could, uh, so you could refer to it. Um, Coming to literacy, I found this very interesting. Now, we know that uh, synthesizing and in blooms is, um, is a very high you know, level, but taking it to uh, a second grade student, actually I can make it very uh, simplified by you know, using this skill, uh, this uh, strategy, where you know how uh, pebbles, when you throw a pebble onto calm water, what happens? So it starts with you know the ripples. The first ripple, it actually 
um, it describes our initial thinking about something, and then it you know evolves as our thinking progresses uh, during, for example, while we read any story. So this is another strategy that you can use, and we use this with our um, uh, students, and it worked. So even if it was this uh, synthesizing, we feel that students are not able to do it, but you could simplify it and use it in uh, other contexts as well. Um, I also, when I um, watched one of your workshops, they were saying that he was saying that feedback needs to be given also, and the students, they need to uh, uh, know how to give feedback. I shared this uh, link uh, from Edutopia and it, it just gives you the explicit examples on you know, how to give feedback and, and how you model it at first and then how students copy this and how they, do, uh, they share it together as a class. I hope this was useful. I could just go on and on and on forever and add many skills. I'm, I'm getting plenty of thank you from all the participants. So, and <laughs> I know there is more that Nermin will be sharing in this webinar. So yeah, yeah, this is the whole purpose of being together and then uh, exchanging idea as educator. This is the power of networking. So what's next, Nermin? So this is what to consider slide. Um, I know that, uh, what to consider that we need to understand that the new vision of any program is, you know, giving all the schools or they encourage schools to um, choose their pedagogy and flexibility, I think, is key when developing any program. Uh, schools now are learning. Uh, they are choosing how learning is taking place and uh, how this how they're reflecting uh, their the school's mission and vision um, and values uh, and the context. To be uh, to be honest, uh, you need to also consider how um, students are steering the learning and consider the role of you know teachers and guardians and everyone involved uh, in that learning. We always say Ali that nothing is is uh, set in stone. But as a school, you could, you know, build the, these pillars to uh, create a positive uh, culture. Um, was one misconception as we, you know, uh, started with the ATL skills is that uh, sometimes schools, they might say that we need to cover all the ATL skills, uh, which is sometimes not the case. We need to, if, if, for example, if a school's goal uh, to focus on well-being, then this is a great chance to link it to effective skills and to integrate these onto the curriculum. PSPE classes, advisory lessons, such as I said, guest speakers, student reflections, or uh, if another school wishes to focus on innovation, for example, then uh, they might also reconsider adding more focus on metacognitive skills to address the needs of their community. So it is a work in progress, Ali, and um, I think schools need to decide what to add to the ATL continuum and what to, you know, adapt and how to adapt and how to extend these skills according to the culture and the context as well. We uh, know that, yeah, we know that now uh, in the context of the IB schools, they can design their own continuum and then they can uh, create their own sub skills, right? So there is a lot of flexibility and freedom uh, for you. Yeah, and then also practitioners, they need to decide uh, when the skills are introduced and, you know, decide on the um, mastery levels, because I saw some question, one question uh, was, was referring to how do we, uh, uh, how do we monitor the progress of these skills. Um, so I think also as a school, you need to decide that. But what, what I can also provide you with is just a quick look at this Dreyfus model that demonstrates that a skill is not only performance, it's also about knowledge, about autonomy, about coping with complexity. It's about, you know, the student being able to have, you know, this or make the, this network thinking, or it just could be a skill. And it's very important to decide when am I going to introduce the skill? How how does mastery look like and to also involve the students because we know that students um first of all learning is uh, uh, in partnership and students they need 
create the success criteria to be able to reach there. So for example, if I am saying students can show others how to use the skill and accurately assess how effectively the skill is used, then as a student, I will say, I am capable of teaching other students how to use the skill. So they would know where they are, you know, from this model, uh, if you wish to use this model or any other models, uh, of course, depending on the criteria that you have. Um, also, if I say, for example, students are introduced to the skill and watch others uh, performing it, it's very important to focus on the success criteria as well for them to be able to say, I know what the use of the skill looks like when others are using it too. So I think Ali, it's very important to um, look at the Dreyfus model and to look at the success criteria as well so we could monitor progress. Uh, because uh, students are different, capabilities are different. And as you also, they was introduced in one of the webinars this morning, how can you scaffold these and how can you cater students' needs? So I think one way to also self-assess is through the success criteria. So this is a suggestion on uh, how you can create the continuum. And um, of course, schools can you can you can choose whatever you know works for you. But uh, first of all, the first thing is uh, try to look at the learning outcomes from the scope and sequence and really understand what they are. And then you could you unpack the ATL skills. So whether you do it in focus groups, grade levels, uh, whatever you choose, try to unpack them using the um, toolkit that. Um, I just shared or any other toolkits that are already available. Uh, then you could map the ATL skills with the learning outcomes. Um, and I would like to say here that it's very important to look at the ATL skills as one unit, as an integral part in the learning experience and not as an add on because it's something they do to be able to achieve a learning outcome. Uh, also set expectations as a school. If a school uh, provides or they offer more than one program, for example, you could uh, adopt the top to bottom approach where you take what they're doing from upper grades and then you know uh, go gradually from there. The implementation is very important. And as we review and adapt any um, scope and sequence document, it's also very important to uh, adapt and review this uh, ATL, um, the continuum, because every year things are changing, we are changing, students are changing. Um, it's just um, it's a holistic, you know, um, uh, experience for everyone. Uh, so this is just a suggestion. Uh, they could start with uh, mapping the ATL skills and then, you know, looking at the learning outcomes from the scope and sequence. Um, I thought I would share this too, Ali. I move forward. Or am I going too fast? Because I tend to speak so fast. And that's for me, I'm, I'm fine. Maybe we can check uh, the audience. And uh, while we are checking the audience about the pace of the uh, webinar, I have a question for you. So this can give maybe a, a break. How do you make teachers interwave the ATLs strands in their practice? Okay, so through collaborative sessions, first of all, if we look at talking from a PYP perspective, so if we look at um, the whole unit and the breakdown and we look at the learning outcomes, uh, we decide together as a team, what are the skills that they need to be able to reach there? So for example, if we're thinking about research, we need to go back to research skills and ask ourselves. So the student needs to know, for example, or communication, they need to uh, be able to summarize or they need to be able to paraphrase if they want to research or they are able to look at uh, primary and secondary sources or uh, sometimes students are able to take notes, for example, because this is very important too. So we just look at this experience as one whole unit and then start from there. So it, it's not like we uh, think of the learning outcomes, this is what they're going to do, this is the inquiry, and then we just add the ATL skills there. They need to, you need to study that uh, as a group. I hope that um, answered your question. And uh, everyone is saying that the pace is good, we can continue. Okay. Uh, I think ideas presented fast. If they would like me to repeat anything, it's just because <laughs> you, you had a long day, Ali, already. 
But um, anyway, I could just go sure. back. I, it's, it's, it's only one one message about the ideas are going fast, but then yeah, everyone yeah. else, they said it's a good pace. Now, if sure. the ideas are going fast, then that's why we are recording. And then you can watch this later. You can do the yeah. pause and you can take notes and then you can watch and rewatch. It will be available on YouTube. And yes. this is what Andrea is saying. Uh, that uh, the video will be available on YouTube. It seems I have another question. Mm. Uh, yeah, so they they usually discuss uh, these points. So it's the same question where we're building on it. And so we continue the discussion uh, that they discuss this, but usually sometimes they lose the pace of the inquiry, maybe in the implementation. You mean that uh, when we are um, focusing on the ATL skills, we might, you know, forget uh, about inquiry? Is that the question? Or uh, I'm not sure if uh, this is what is meant to be. But again, what I would say, if we feel, uh, yeah, I got the response, mm -hmm. uh, the other way around. So let me say, if we lose the inquiry. Uh, if, if we lose the inquiry from my perspective, that's mean it's a moment to stop and to reflect and to say right. why we lost it and then how we can align them together and we can, uh, um, because again, you see, it's, uh, it's this whole idea I mean, of the implementation, right? And we have a cycle, we implement and yeah. then we found that we were successful or no, there was something missing we reflect and we go again to the cycle. And because yeah. it's an ongoing cycle of implementation and reflection, so it should be, we should I'm not just, worry. I'm trying to, 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 to understand this because if you feel that at some point you need uh, to have more inquiry-based lessons, then one suggestion is to have an ATL week where you could just focus on ex the explicit teaching of ATL uh, of ATL skills throughout different subjects during the week. So this way you will not lose the, the inquiry and at the same time you could just, you know, explicitly teach these skills. So you can yeah. on the program, um, on the curriculum, you could dedicate two uh, weeks, for example, where you just focus on ATL skills and that's it. I think that um, that could work. Yeah, so uh, Betty is mentioning the whole idea of we have concepts, we have the lines of inquiry, we have the ATS, and so there is a lot of component to be taken into consideration. And I think uh, Nermin advice is to highlight what you are doing when, and remember, everything is embedded. So the balance is between the explicit and the implicit teaching. Now we are doing thinking, we are doing communication, we are doing uh, many of the skills, but we are not teaching you the skills. So maybe Maybe if we are meeting tomorrow and we are doing a workshop, it's there where we are going to teach a skill, but you are using all of them. And same for the concepts and same for your lines of inquiry or your essential questions. So it's this whole idea of in our weekly or on our unit plan to, uh, uh, to, to check where is the explicit, where is the implicit and how we can balance it. So hopefully uh, this is helpful, Betty. Yeah, and uh, speaking of inquiry as well, as they are researching and as they are collecting data, this is part of inquiry too. So also, as I as we say, do not look at ATL skills as an add-on. We could also suggest that they uh, should not look at inquiry as an add-on. It's just an approach. It's uh, something they um, can, you know, embed within the ATL skills too. So it depends on the vision and how you plan for it and how you go backward and feel. Uh, forward uh, with planning. So well, taking us to uh, this uh, uh, slide, we would also like to see the answers. So if you, within the context of the ATL skills, if you can share the success stories and learning experiences. So think of what made this learning experience memorable. Maybe you could think of a parent or think of a student who demonstrated the ATL skills in a certain way or who mastered uh, a skill and it was uh, very interesting to see that. Or you could just see, uh, say teachers. Uh, so think of that moment and I uh, would like to see your answers in the chat box, Ali. I'll just give them one minute, two minutes. That's not how to prioritize. So while we are waiting for these uh, learning experiences, the memorable one, and what made them memorable maybe, 
uh, I'm going to look at uh, a Giotti question. And then uh, she's asking about how to prioritize on what to teach during the week. So what do you think, Nermin? And then I can add my perspective. Uh, how to prioritize one, uh, what to teach. I think it all starts with um, the feedback you're getting from the students as well and how they're progressing in that, um, given that you, you do have, yes, we do have some learning outcomes that we would like to cover, but what happens sometimes during the week is different from what we expect. So looking at the students from the students' perspective, what they need and then move forward, that's one uh, suggestion. What's yours? My other strategy will be, imagine uh, Nermin uh, Giotti has 20 uh, lessons per week. Uh, don't plan for the 20, plan for yeah. 18. And because the, the, the other two lessons, they can be recap lessons, they can be based on the interest of the students. And so, yeah, you don't feel overwhelmed that you have like to finish a huge content in a very limited time. So here again, it's the flexibility when you are looking at your timetable and Ahmed is talking about a plan B. Now, uh, let's go back to the memorable experience. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, no, this is a very fast now. They are very fast. <laughs> no, we can read because I'm reading. Um, yes. I love the idea of uh, the imaginary civilizations. Uh, how yes, I'm getting uh, first graders are uh, sharing uh, uh, how they felt as a scientist because they've done a lot of research during this unit. Uh, so this was a memorable experience in a social study project about civilization. Uh, it was a memorable one because uh, we listened a lot to the feedback from the student. Um, ATLs, we are embedding them in our weekly assembly. You see, there's plenty of way on how we can use them. Uh, Hiba is talking about the PYP exhibition and how this is also a memorable learning experience. So uh, we use, uh, the ATL in our well-being sessions. This is from Paula. And I can see that we have another uh, question. So a lot of questions here. I think the question is, how do we strike a balance considering all the components of the curriculum? Lovely to hear the suggestion of having an ATL week to explicitly teach some of these skills. This, yeah, was, this is a very practical thing that maybe we can start this year. And you see like now for all these, uh, ideas about uh, uh, the balance. This is the most difficult thing about the PYP and there is not a recipe or a one way exactly. of doing it. You have your maybe local requirement or ministry requirement, or maybe you are using the American or the British curriculum, and then you need to create the units of inquiry. You need to embed the ATL. And I always uh, tell all the people that we are lifelong learners. So if you are modeling this for your students, it means that learning is a process and it's never ending and from here you might have a completely different shift if you miss the morning session because it was early for you it will be on youtube and uh, you can also listen to kevin and what are the ideas that she, that he shared and why we still go to schools these days if all the knowledge is available on the internet and on google so there is another reason why we go to school exactly and, and i would also like to, to to add what you just said that use every single experience and you know that experience could be during um you know a talk with a student to yeah. you know make sure that you're actually you know connecting all the components together use every time uh, students spend at school to just you know um do that so it's 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 not there's no one way to do it as you just mentioned and it's not a recipe it depends on the school it depends on the teachers it depends on students themselves as well. And so let's not forget the parents. <laughs> yeah, the parents, of course. Okay, <laughs> good. So what's next, Nermin? Okay, so this is my last slide, Ali. And actually, when I finished this uh, the, the workshop, I was thinking, uh, why didn't I add this at the beginning? Because it's mm -hmm. very important to think of the why at the beginning. So thinking of the impact of the ATL continuum, I 
created this page where, you know, as we all think of this experience as um, parents, as you just mentioned, teachers, practitioners, school, and as learners uh, in class, it's very important to understand what is the impact of this, uh, of the, uh, sorry, of this ATL continuum. So from a parent's point of view, when I'm talking perspective here, can't, uh, for example, they can take part of any learning experiences and they can reinforce the skill at home. That was just um, one prompt. Uh, from a teacher's or practitioner's perspective, they are, are able to cater students' needs and uh, scaffold. And uh, from school, they can extend and adapt this ATL continuum according to their culture, context, mission, vision, and values. Or as learners, they will be able to uh, assess the progress. They can set goals accordingly and, um, you know, self-efficacy. So uh, I would love to see how um, uh, the participants are also reflecting on this one. Uh, we need well. a link, uh, Nermin, if you don't mind, because yeah. the one that I got is an image. Okay, I'm going to shift here. Uh, and maybe Nermeen, if on the Padlet also you can add the first two links. Uh, and in that case, also the people who missed them, the Google document and uh, the uh, Think link, uh, they can also have access to these. So, uh, and you can keep the Padlet link for you. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, I, I wanted to say, Nermeen, add them on Padlet. So, on, create a column on, on Padlet. Padlet. Okay. Yeah, so can, everyone can have access to the three links. Uh, if they got uh, yeah. access to Padlet, you see? So uh, this is the whole idea of the collaboration and the sharing. So by just adding a section, Nermeen, and you say the Google foil yeah. and the uh, uh, other one where you had the strategies. So this is for Sandeep. Sandeep, if you have the access of Padlet now, you will be able to find all the links that we have shared and all the resources that we have shared. So this is resource number one. And then on Padlet, feel free to put your ideas uh, about these different perspectives on the ATL. You have already an example and you can add uh, other examples. And while Nermeen is updating uh, the Padlet and adding all the links that we did, I'm going to remind you that uh, we still have a one session this afternoon. So I'm going to the I'm going to share my screen now, Nermeen. Yeah. And so we have uh, uh, an afternoon session, one final session. It will be about art. The session is in Arabic, and we are going to see how we embed the uh, 21st century skills in the visual art class. So if you are an Arabic speaker, feel free to join. The session will be in approximately uh, 20 minutes from now. And then if you are a French speaker, don't forget, every month we have a session in French where it's a very collaborative meeting where you share resources and you uh, learn from each other. Educators join from all over and these sessions are in the uh, afternoon. Uh, so you can, after the uh, school day, come and work with us and collaborate with us. So uh, what else? On the website, you have also the link for the YouTube, the Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, depending on which social media uh, you use and is your favorite. You can follow us and you can know about our upcoming events. On the 11th of December, we are having the Wellbeing Day. Uh, many speakers are going to join and they will be uh, sharing their experiences in French, English, and Arabic. Before we wrap it up, Nermeen, we have more questions uh, or more comments. So uh, uh, ATL, uh, Elizabeth is telling us that uh, the ATLs, if we connect them in different subjects, uh, this will help in uh, gaining time and in, in, in teaching them. So what do you think about this idea? I totally agree. Like, um, if you explicitly teach them somewhere, you implicitly teach them uh, somewhere else. Um, um, I think the balance is for you also to decide, for example, some um, ATL skills are more related to uh, certain subjects. So this is when you are explicitly teaching them, uh, paraphrasing and summarizing, for example, is just something you could do um, in language classes. So you could use the knowledge and relate them to the learning outcomes and just use so you will not spend uh, so much time thinking of, you know, when 
when and where and how do I implement the ACL skill? Uh, okay. Uh, Sally is asking about the French session. Sally, I've put the post uh, uh, on uh, Facebook. So once per month we meet in French and we talk about the uh, ATL. Uh, and uh, Darin is asking again for the Padlet link. Darin, if you don't mind adding it and sharing it again. Uh, the French uh, sessions are a collaborative planning session where we plan for a specific ATL, we share, re we share resources, and then you can take it uh, further. So, um, okay, yes, so Andrea, Andrea is giving some ideas about uh, let the student reflect on the ATL uh, using exit card strategies and uh, what else we want to tell you. So uh, that's it. So the, the day in English was full of ideas. All the session will be available on YouTube. If you are an Arabic speaker and you still have uh, approximately like one hour of your, uh, of your, uh, uh, of your time, uh, please join us. And uh, yes, Nermeen, you are sharing only with the host and the uh, and and me. So you you should you should put everyone. So this is the Padlet link, which yeah. includes everything that we shared today. Um, thank Nermeen, you so thanks much, again. Ali. Yeah, thank you so much, Ali, and shout out to everyone who just joined. I hope that was useful and looking forward to other sessions and webinars with you, Ali, and uh, everyone. Thank, thank you so you. much. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you for all the comments.